Well, I've certainly had a fun weekend. Alright, goodbye. Just kidding. Welcome back to Norman Nerdum, everybody. I'm Red Strider, and yes, we're going to talk about it. So I attended the Dallas FNT Reverse Meetup and had an absolute blast. I wore my uh, side-scrollers baseball tee in 90-degree weather in the middle of Texas, and I wore jeans, too, like a dope. But it was an excellent time. I was able to uh, able to meet and shake hands with and take pictures with a lot of my favorite people from the internet, including my uh, shout-out to Vagabundo Devon, who drove all the way from Macon, Georgia, not drove, but traveled all the way from Macon, Georgia, to, to hang out with everybody, and it was just an absolute blast. He was correct. The Saskia twins do give the best hugs. I got my signatures, I got my, I brought my books, and it was wonderful. It was so much fun. But you know what made it even better? You know what made it even better? Seeing a rip reverse detractor get carted out in cuffs. If you don't believe me, here's the video. <laughs> Now, I can already hear over and over and over again, in fact, my mentions have been an absolute clown shoes. Well, mostly clown, somewhat clown shoes. There have been a lot of people who have tried and failed to explain what I myself witnessed and tried to provide context that I was there to see and I was there to prove them completely incorrect. But here's the thing. These people are nothing if not complete liars. So what exactly happened? Well. A little bit of background. So Eric July is a man who has created, I mean, I, I don't need, I don't even tell you this, but he's a man who has created a, a quite an impressive business for himself selling comic books. First, he was a YouTuber, and then he made frequent appearances on like Friday Night Tights and with Gary Nerdrotic and, and ads from Heels vs. Babyface and all of them, and all those people. He is, was known as kind of a, a really clever comic book guy who knew his stuff, and it was it was easy to get involved in the conversation because he's he was very he was very familiar and very knowledgeable about the world of comic books. Well, he decided that he was going to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. He was going to create his own line of comic books called the Ripperverse. And every, four campaigns so far, four campaigns, they've all gotten over a million and a half dollars in pre-orders. Not not crowdfunding, pre-orders. That's just money used to print the books and send them out. Because that's not cheap in and of itself. But he managed to do it four times. Four times. That's amazing, right? It would be for anybody with good sense, but no. See, here's the thing. Eric committed the cardinal sin of indie comic book creation. He didn't kiss the rings of those who came before. Such as people like Ethan Van Skyver. Ethan Van Skyver, who is quoted as saying Eric has the hubris to think he can create a comic book. Does anyone else think that that idiot sounds like Al Gore? The hubris to, hub, hubris to create a comic book. Think he could just do it. Well, here's the thing. Eric July did it. He's done it four times. And if judging by the response I saw la the, last night from Dallas, man, he's not going to stop anytime soon. Because he's gotten excellent people around him. Excellent people around him to help write. To help write to help write his books and to and to add to his vision, like the Saska twins writing Yaira number one, which I will review this week, I promise. Eric July videos are really good for my channel for that reason. But I really enjoyed Alpha Core, the, written by Chuck Dixon, and absolutely loved it. Um, and the in the first two the first two ISM books are pretty good. I enjoyed them. I have my criticisms. I have my criticisms of all of them, but I, for the most part, like it. I like being a part of this community. I like reading these books. I enjoy the story. I enjoy the world. It can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes because there's, there's just a lot there, but I still enjoy it. Well, unfortunately, Eric July has fallen into the crosshairs of some really trashy people. I call them trash tubers. People who don't actually, don't actually give a damn about comic books. All they want to do is find a target for their trash content to create controversies and start fights and mess with people in order to in order to get content for their for their shitty channels and for the and to try and 
farm super chats by making themselves look like victims and by drumming up the super chats and drumming up their audience into treating these other people like their enemies. Here's the thing. Eric does not give a damn about anybody. Eric doesn't give a damn about any of these people. Not anymore. So unfortunately, an, uh, I think it was about a year, year and a half ago, there was an entire group of people popped up. They were, we call them Eric July detractors. And they're, or tractors for short, and they're actually quite hilarious in their criticisms. Lobbying ridiculous criticisms like, um, is 3D asset art, or what's the plot of Isom, what's your favorite part, what are his powers? Like, these are questions that are asked by people who have not actually read the books, who don't actually care about comic books, because they don't give a damn about anything other than their terrible trash content. Unfortunately, Ethan Van Skyver was stupid enough to not gatekeep his his inner circle enough because he used to be a friend he used to be kind of a friend of eric july i mean he did he did the 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 cover of isom 2 that i bought was done by ethan van skyver it looks great but unfortunately he surrounded himself with a lot of really trashy people one of them one of them being a man who had who had uh tracked down eric july's great grandfather's headstone did God knows what to it. He also went to Eric July's Ripperverse warehouse where everything is stocked and sent off. And he has also showed up at multiple meets and caused a ruckus. And this man is rather as, I don't know if you thought this was clever or not. He called him, he calls him Clipperverse. I just know him as, I just know him as Riley because no one else is going to know who Clipperverse is or what the hell it is. But man, you look, this guy is, if you could bottle and sell unhinged, all you'd have to do is put his is put his ass sweat into a syringe, and it, you would be you would be insane just by even extracting it. It was absolutely this guy's nuts. This guy's a certifiable nutball, but he is doing but he is doing everything that he is doing, at the behest of his higher ups of his internet daddies, Ethan Van Skyver, unfortunately being one of them, because Ethan Van Skyver has been another one who has turned his back on Eric July. Because Eric July had the gall, the unmitigated, again, quote, hubris to succeed in a way that left Ethan Van Skyver in the dust. Good. Now, I would just say this before I begin. I am not that big of an EBS fan. I've read, uh, read some things that he's been involved with, and I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not really a hater of his. At least I wasn't until now. Same thing with Eric July. I liked his appearances on some on some uh, some of the Blaze programs. He was actually it was very, had some pretty refreshing takes. However, there is only of the two, there is only one man who has actually made it easy for me to be a customer. All you gotta do is look at the Ripperverse Code of Ethics, and is the exact opposite of pretty much everything that Ethan Van Skyver has ever done in the past two years. The Ripperverse started in twenty twenty two. It's 2024 now. It's been going pretty strong. But EBS has unfortunately surrounded himself with people that have turned him into a into a uh, butthurt seether, who, again, cannot stand the fact that Eric July has seen success in which EBS has been very limited in. Again, the whole point of being, a, of being an artistic creator is make it easy for the audience to separate their money from their wallets. Entertainment such as the arts, such as comic books, especially are a luxury industry. People need to pay their bills. People need to pay their mortgage. People need to make their car payments before they buy comic books. Obviously. The thing is, you need to add something. You need to create something that people are missing from their lives. That's something that a lot of these comic book creators, especially like in Marvel and DC, they are not grateful for any of the opportunities that they've been given whatsoever. They act like butthurt children whenever they don't, whenever their books do not sell very well, or whenever someone rightfully criticizes their content in their writing, saying it is suffused with left-wing politics or identity or identity junkie talking points, and they and they bitch and moan and cope and seethe about how the industry, how the it's not me that's doing the wrong thing. Oh, it's the customer. It's those toxic fans. It's all of their fault, their fault, their fault. Deflecting, deflecting, deflecting responsibility for where it, for, from where it originated from. The creator. If you write terrible books, people ain't going to buy them. If people feel like that, they, if people feel like that you feel obligated to their money, 
if you feel entitled to their support, they're not going to support you. Just look at just I mean, we see that in all avenues of left wing media. These idiots get uh, make Marvel movies and make Star Wars films, but we haven't seen one of those in about five years, half a decade. That's surprising. Or anything else, anything else comic book related, anything else that has been suffused with left wing politics. They hate the audience, and then they wonder why the audience doesn't show up. Well, all this to say, what happened in the Dallas meetup was actually quite extraordinary. So I got there about 6.30 p.m. The doors opened at 7. I was able to get in. I was able to get in pretty early. I was able to get in line, say hi to Eric July, get a, get my books signed, say hi to the Saskia twins, get, my, get, get, a, get a photo and get some signatures, talk to them a little bit. By the way, they are so incredibly kind, and their enthusiasm for the Ripperverse is palpable. I mean, just look at their Twitter account. It is, it is just absolutely insane how pumped they are to be a part of this. They love working for Eric July. They absolutely love it. They cannot say enough good things about him and how excited they are. They're even doing Yaira number two and Blood Ruth. But you don't know who Blood Ruth is. She's 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 kind of a mix between uh, she she is a a blood bending female Solomon Kane with mon with monster wrangling powers. Kind of fun, right? A lot of really I mean what who better to do a book like this? Then the Saskas, who are known for who are known for their strong female characters, and also a touch of horror, and we'll see that in Yari number one whenever I drop my review. So I was just having a grand old time. I was just talking, laughing, and scratching with all these people, saying hi to Va saying hi to Vagabond, saying hi to everybody that was there, grabbing a drink with Court of Black Garrett, saying hi to Melissa, Mayor Nerd Roddick's wife, and just having a grand old time. Well, shout out to Selena and Iron Oxide, the entire panel of the Rogues Gallery, because Selena sends me a message and says, and says, check it out. Uh, Riley's here. Like, what? Now again, as a reminder, this Riley guy is the one that has gotten so riled up, sorry, I had to, that he went to Eric July's great-grandfather's grave, and he also doxed the Ripperverse warehouse, went there after hours and put some stickers on there, like a piece, like a, like an unhinged psychopath piece of shit he is. Oh, and also, whenever he has a, a girlfriend, kept woman, I don't even know, I, they're, they're probably brother and sister, first cousins at the very least. She is an OnlyFans model. She is also somebody who has been repeatedly slapped by him because the chat tells them to, tells him to slap her for money. And you can just even see the way he streams, the way he talks to her. It's utterly insane. It's utterly insane. No, no real man talks to his woman like that. Absolutely not. He treats her with such disrespect. He treats her like a, like a child. However, she acts like a child. She seems like a child. She seems like her family tree just goes as a straight line. And I, I don't know, mint, julep, spearmint, double mint gum. I don't know. That's her name. Mint something. I don't care. But they showed up. And it was daylight. It was dark by the time I got that message from Selena. And saying, oh, and saying, check it out. Riley's here. The screenshot she sends me was in the daytime. So I was just having a grand old time. And so was everybody inside. The line kept getting longer and longer and longer the longer we were there. It showed no signs of stopping. I was there. I was up like about 50 feet away from the exit sign, and it got, got right through. However, the line just went straight past the entire building and all the way, or not all the way around the outside of the building, but all the way around the inside of the building, and it didn't stop. It didn't stop. I ate dinner for I ate dinner there with some bar food for about half an hour, and it was still just as long as it ever was, if not maybe a little longer. More people kept coming, more people kept coming, because people love FNT. They love the Friday Night Tights crew. They love talking to Nerd Rada because he's the nicest guy ever. They love talking to Garrett. They love ta their stuttering Craig was there, and I was really happy about that because he actually recognized my shirt. And when I went up to shake his hand, he said, "said Look at that shirt. Look at it. Look at it." As a as an avid watcher of the Side Scrollers podcast and a blab simp. No shame about that. That actually made my night. It was really fun. Just a grand old time. But I didn't even notice that this lard-ass, the lard-ass biscuit dough dude was standing outside harassing people. So if that wasn't bad enough, he decide he also is streaming it the whole time. This event is three hours. He was streaming it for three hours. He was out there while well, it's still daylight streaming this whole thing. The owner of the establishment that we were in came out and told him to get lost. So he did. Kinda. He said, there's you can stand over there. And again, this whole thing is streamed by Riley, aka Clipperverse. This whole thing is streamed. 
And so eventually, the later the, the later the night gets, the more I didn't. Nobody even really knows he's there. I even lost track of him a few times, and I was kind of in and out. I was kind of in and out the outside area, the inside area, just having a grand old time talking to people. Very few people even know even knew who this guy was. Now he's wearing like an extra large tank top that fits him like a leotard. Because again, this man is built like a bag of disc, bag of a bag of uh, biscuit dough that's been slapped against a tree multiple times. This guy also has a voice that sounds like his internet daddy, Dick Masterson. We'll get to that in a minute. It's the most annoying thing you have ever heard. Just imagine Jim Carrey saying the most annoying sound in the world. An entire speech pattern like that. That's how he sounds talking. Just regular, ordinary, just conversational. That's how he speaks. Imagine that. Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber is hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to do it. But imagine an entire... Imagine that embodied in a man, or man. He takes the shape of a man, but he, again, Jabba the Hutt seems fit compared to him. But he just keeps going on and on and on, harassing people, shouting at them, and shouting at the chat, because again, the whole time they're live streaming, just farming that sweet, sweet engagement and that the sweet, sweet donations, the sweet, sweet super chats. Because again, they are slaves to the super chat. Remember, this is a man who thinks it's okay to slap his autistic kept woman for money. Really? Really? But this is the, these are the kind of people that EBS and Dick Masterson have around them. I'm sorry. I have to keep bringing them up because it matters. It matters. And it's going to matter here in a minute. But eventually the night wears on. The night wears on. And so, I'm, and so we're just having a grand old time. Until eventually me and Vagabond are outside on the patio area. And I look over and there are two cop cars near the entrance. I'm like, uh, Vagabond, check it. There's two cop cars here. Like, yeah, they're probably just here checking out security. Like, I don't know. They they just got here. And there's another one that just showed up. Uh, what? And so we're just sitting there waiting for a second, and they're talking to the owner out, fr out in the front entrance, and then they walk toward where a walk toward where um walk toward where Riley and Mint, whatever her face, are on the opposite ends of the building. There's a window. So Eric July is kind of in the corner, is in the corner of the building. Their faces are, like, almost literally pressed up against the window, like Depression-era kids pressing their butter faces up to a candy shop, marveling at what they can't, what, marveling at what they will never have. And the thing is, they were, they were, they were booted immediately. They tried to get in. Now remember, this is an RSVP-only event. They were booted whenever they tried to get in. The minute they showed up, like, nope, go away, you're gone. Because they, they recognize this guy. This guy's stupid enough to put his face on the internet. Oh, and he's dumb enough to actually do stupid stuff with his face on the internet. God help him. But they recognize him. We, they, everybody knows who he is. I didn't recognize I didn't recognize him by his face, but I recognize his voice. <laughs> and remember, the entire time they're still live streaming. Both Riley and Mint, whatever, are still live streaming. And I even I even went in a couple times and just kind of told them to fuck off and that they're you know they're terrible degenerate pieces of human garbage. But. After that, so the cops come over, and they're talking to them. I'm expecting them to leave at this point. So they were talking to them for a good 20, 20, 30 minutes, 45 minutes maybe. This is all streamed. You can see that, in fact, the rogues gallery did, did a, pretty much went through the whole thing. This guy kept talking and talking and talking and talking. And here's the thing. If he had had any kind of, of legitimate instruction that were to tell you, to, to say... Any kind of, you know, handle, the proper handling, they would have said, don't talk to the cops. Shut up. Don't say a word. But no. This idiot not didn't just sing like a canary whenever the cops were called. He sang like a Greek chorus. Seriously, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir was texting him, telling him to cool it. They were, he just went on and on and on and on. Now, the cops were called for trespassing charges. Not really charges, but called for trespassing. Then they cuffed him, and that's where you see my video. That's where that's the one that I just that's the one that I just played. This is the one that's kind of going around. I was not I did not do the I did not do the cops bad boys edit to it. I'm afraid that goes to my that, shout out to my boy LG uh, LG Wilmer, and uh, man, I'm so glad I was there to see that. I'm so glad I was there to see that. So <coughs> cuffs go on. He's led away into the cop car, and of course Mint Julep is filming off in the distance because. She's impotent and can't go any further up into the building. Otherwise, she'll be charged for trespassing herself. Now, 
you can see in my video that there is a lot of cheers and laughter and jeering and fanfare and applause at watching this guy do the perp walk. Now, my video, after I was done, after I was done recording, they're like, who is that? There are at least a dozen people around me who are like, who is that? <laughs> who had no idea who he was. So I explained to him who he was. Like, do you remember the guy that, and, this, and they remember this. I said, do you remember the guy that uh, that docks the Ripperverse warehouse? Like, oh yeah, yeah, that's him. What? Yeah, and I also added this for extra context. Yeah, he also slaps his girlfriend, the one filming over there for 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 super chats. Like, what? No way. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. I had to remind. I had to tell these people who he was. I'm sad that even I even know. But I say that because he is so irrelevant, and everybody around them is so irrelevant that nobody in that building knew. And guys, this venue was packed. And I actually asked Gary later on, is this as big as Vegas? He says, actually bigger. He said the UK meetup was the biggest one that they've ever done, and this one was bigger. And I saw, I was at Vegas. That was, it was kind of, we were packed in there like sardines, but we were having a grand old time. And this one, especially, the line was out the door for a good 20 minutes just to get in. It was nuts. And it was so much fun. But everybody in there was just having a grand old time with each other. Talking and laughing and scratching, playing uh, playing playing bar games, talking to Melanie Mac, or or getting stuff signed, and just in interacting with each other, and talk telling stories about the Dallas Fan Expo, which I didn't get to go to, but oh well, it's fine. Not better about it at all. But they're just having a grand old time, and these two irrelevant idiots are out there having a problem with it. So, why did he get arrested? Why did he get arrested? He got arrested for stalking. He got arrested for stalking. Here's why you shut up when it comes to the police. Because he's on the stream for a good 30, 45 minutes giving his side of the whole thing. And he's telling the cops all the reasons why he's there. Oh, I don't like those guys in there. They're just either uh, quote, right wing grifter fox. And they, he is just going on and on and on, describing a pattern of behavior. Describing, he is telling them that he is he has he has gone after he has gone to different Air July events uninvited. That he's been kicked out multiple times. He's been asked to leave. He's been told he's been told to go away. Like, so the cops are hearing this, and you and you can just see in their whole stream the cops are so tired. They're like, what is going on? I don't get paid enough for this, and I feel bad for the guy. But they you know bad for the guys. But here's the thing. Riley just kept talking. He just kept going on and on and on and on. And it has all arguments basically boiled down to, I don't like that guy in there, Eric July, that black man that somehow made a bunch of money that I have a problem with. I don't like that guy in there. Therefore, I've showed up to like three or, to about three or four of his different events because I didn't like him. Three, he even he mentioned 3D assets and 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 recycled storyline, like all the same crap we've heard for the past two years. Like we get it, we hear you. Your mom still doesn't love you, but he just kept going on and on and on and on. And that's when the cuffs came on because he was arrested for stalking. Now here's the thing: this is not and and after all that happened, and the cope and seethe from the comics gate side has been hilarious because they claim that Eric July called the cops on him. Nope. Because after that, I walk in the I walk back in the building because I, I was I, I was the one I was one of two people who had the who were who were recording the whole thing, uh, me and me and um and Mint Julep whatever her face is she was she was do, recording the arrest and so I recorded the perp walk on the way to, on the way across the building of the cop car with rounds of applause, so I walk in I walk back into the building where there are still people lined up. Who don't even know this is happening because the light, the, the the lights for the police for uh, on the on the cop cars aren't even on, so there is entire entire building full of people who have no idea this is happening. Just shows you how irrelevant these people are, and how much fun we're having, and how much they can, how much they're coping and seething about being a part of it. So I admittedly cut in line at Air July's line, and I feel a little bad bit bad about it, but I don't because we shared a funny moment. All I did was turn my phone around, press play. He's like, what? <laughs> so he's double over laughing like they arrested him oh no way he's got arrested oh man what a fucking retard man and we're just having a blast we're just double over laughing at the utter at the utter insanity the clown shoes behavior of this guy 
And I was like, I thought you might enjoy that. It's like, send that to me. Like, yeah, absolutely, I will. I had sent that to like so many people. I was walking around like, guys, you want to see something funny? I was, it was hilarious. So I even posted. I even posted it on my ex account. I even put it on, on our uh, Rose Gallery chat. And it was so much fun. We we're having a blast with it. The whole time, after he's after he's he is perp walked, you can see on his you can see again on his stream. Mint Julep is still filming the entire time, like an idiot. A cop comes up, gives her his wallet. He's also wearing a little gay-looking yellow cape. The cop hands the cape back to her. <laughs> I'm going to piss myself laughing when I saw that. It could have been anything else. And he said uh, he was relaying a message from Riley, who's in the car, to this, to this woman who's on stream. And says, he says, end the chat and call Dick. Sorry, end the stream and call Dick. Uh, oops. What? Call Dick Ma Call. We know what that means. It means Dick Masterson. But the entire time, we're watching this stream going. With our entire time, I'm, I'm seeing it analyzed on the on the Rose Gallery stream. Like this guy can't be real. This is before he got the. <coughs> I can't believe what I'm watching. This guy's nuts. This guy's insane. And this and the girl is no better. This girl. This girl is no better. She's a brainless idiot who does what she does what she's told probably for drug money. She's again. She's an OnlyFans model. Who probably, honestly, Nancy Pelosi would make more on OnlyFans than this woman. But I'm... I When I heard that, I couldn't... I, I could and could not believe it. But this is how funny it is. He has now more or less incriminated Dick Masters in this whole thing. And EBS is also watching this... Is also watching the stream the whole time. Again, how pathetic. These comic skaters seeing... From the outside looking in, from two, from like degrees of separation, watching this huge event transpire without them, without their involvement, without any of their fans, and many of them who have seen the behavior of Comic Skate over the years have been like, uh uh, I'm not doing this anymore. And left, you know, to be a part of the Eric, part of the Ripperverse, part of the FNT crew. Even if they didn't, they still left behind because these people are acting like psychopaths. They're watching from the outside looking in, having an issue. With hundreds of people having fun. Alex Stein was there. Lila Hart was there. It was a grand old time. I am so glad I went. And it was free, by the way. By the way, these meetups, they're free. You don't have to pay to get in. They do this. The whole the whole crew does this to love on their fans. To say, listen, we'll and we'll uh, we'll provide we'll provide we'll maybe provide you some food or for, or some drinks if we can. But we're not going to charge you for entry. Just be just be good to the just be good to the venue. Be patron be patrons of the venue. Patronize them, tip them well, make them want us back. That's pretty much it. That shows you. They yeah, sure they'll they'll show they'll sell some stuff. They actually got a foil variant of of uh, Yara number one because I really loved it. And I also got a, a a t shirt, you know. But also they don't they don't charge for their signatures. Neither Air July or the Saskas charge for anything. Except for like some of the merch there, they don't charge for signatures. I was just at Collecticon Houston. I paid a bunch of money for a Mar for a Charles Martinet signature and a Ray Park signature, and a um, and a, and a few other ones, a few other anime voice actors. But I was willing to do it because I was supporting them. But these guys, they do this for the fans. They do this because they love us and they want us to feel they want us to feel like they like they care, and they're always fun. Vegas was a blast. This was a blast. This was more. This is what was better attended than Vegas. It was the most. It was. It was fantastic. And now my video is kind of going. Is kind of going around, being spread around. This is fun. But they can't stand the fact that there are people enjoying themselves. They can't stand the fact that there's an entire group of people who may have been their fans, that, but they screwed up so badly that these people will never look twice at Comic State properties again. The fact is. EVS and Dick Masterson and all that, they are nothing more than trash tubers. EVS especially, EVS now makes more money on his trash cast than he had than in in two, in the past two or three years than he has with his books. How sad is that? People would rather watch him cope and see from the outside looking in than actually participate in any art that he's any art that he's putting out into the world. Whereas Eric July, yeah, sure he'll do some appearances every once in a while, but but if it's during a busy season, no, he devotes himself to the Ripperverse. He devotes himself to whatever new release is coming out. He is on it. Now, also remember that 
at the uh, the release, I think, of Yara number one, it was under DDoS attack twice. There's an entire group of people, there's an entire contingency of people who are so clown shoes that they will try to subvert a black man's business for no other reason other than the fact that he's existing, he's making money, and they're not. How absolutely pathetic. But see, what Dick and EVS did not, con did not take into consideration is that now that the law is involved and he's being charged with stalking, there's now, I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the DMs? Who knows what they're going to discover through his text messages? Who knows what they're going to find out? If Dick paid for this, because again, it seems like Dick definitely, Dick seemed to, it seemed to pay for this. Maybe, in, maybe if not directly or indirectly involved, I don't know. But if he's involved in any way, he could be, he could be incriminated in this too. They don't think about anything but their own revenge. They don't think about anything other than, then whatever book that that, can, that come out comes out next, they're just gonna crap on. They're just gonna they're just gonna have a podcast that lambasts it. And listen, fine, fine, but they're taking it way too far. And in fact, I even had my head on a swivel. I didn't even know this guy was there. I didn't know Riley and Riley and Mint Julep had showed up. But I had it in my head. I was thinking, you know what? If someone was gonna try something, this would be the time to do it. But here's how short-sighted they are. So here's the thing. There's one thing Texans don't like being... There's one, one, thing, one thing Texans don't like is being, you know, messed with. We don't like being harassed. We don't like people being in our faces. We don't like people acting like degenerate pieces of human garbage outside our events. Riley, you picked the wrong people to mess with. Because here's the thing. You're harassing a bunch of Texans. Most of us are from the area at a bar when we've been drinking and I you're lucky I say and I actually saved you because there are like six people around me who are saying let's get him we need we need we need to get like let's go shut him down again they've been drinking I said guys don't laugh at him from a distance he's irrelevant he's a he's a retard let's just let it let him cook let him go let him shout impotently from the streets don't bother there are people who are like, no, we don't want to hurt, don't want to hurt him, but just want to, you know, go up and talk to him and go up and try to get him to get out of here. Like, don't do it, don't do it, let him go. And they listened to me. They listened to me. But the minute, the minute that the gravestone became a thing, where they went to Eric July's great grandfather's gravestone, the one who I saw was named after, his character is created and he's named after. And the minute they doxed and trespassed on the on the Ripperverse warehouse grounds, a line had been crossed. A line had been crossed. The thing is, this is not a war that we are waging whatsoever. Because if, God forbid, God forbid any any venue would be able to scrub out the smell that Dick and Vito and EVS had any kind of event where they where they had a big old meetup, there's none of us would be anywhere near it. None of us would be anywhere near it. There may be one or two people who who are who wanted one maybe wanted to talk with some other people who are kind of cool, but none of us would be anywhere near it. None of us would do what Riley did, and certainly none of us would go on stream and say, "Oh, here's my here's my history of here's my history of harassment and stalking," because I'm an idiot who can't shut up, because I'm an idiot who thinks that telling my whole story to a cop. Expecting him to, to just say, "Oh, absolutely, go go right ahead." This guy, July guy, sounds like a piece of crap. You should absolutely go. No, that's not how this works, you idiot. But the law's involved. It's Sunday now. He's gonna be cooking in a jail cell till tomorrow. It's hilarious. But let this be a lesson. Actions have consequences. You never know how far your stupid behavior is gonna take you. Until the cops show up. Have any of us ever done the same thing to anybody from Comicsgate? No. Have any of us gone to a warehouse at Marvel or DC or whatever warehouse Ethan Van Skyver is? Well, God, I'm tired. I haven't had near enough water today. <laughs> whatever warehouse Ethan Van Skyver is not sending his but his books out of. Have any one of us tried to dox it and find it out and go to his warehouse and push Ripperverse stickers on it? No. Because we're not freaking psychopaths. We are not insane. And we would never do that. And if anyone ever did, we would roundly condemn it. We would not say, oh, it's just coping seeds, bro. It's no big deal, bro. We would not do that. We wouldn't do that. 
And you can't, you cannot, and you cannot say that we would because no one has ever even come close to that. Yeah, I had to, I had to keep back a bunch of drunk Texans from going up all on your, to go all up in your face, Riley. But guess what? That's you're lucky the cops led you away, buddy. You're lucky the cops didn't. You're lucky the cops showed up. There are people pissed off enough about you, in the in the area outside. We could barely hear you, but we knew who you were. We knew who you were. We knew why you were here. And again, you don't think I mean, you're from like what Virginia, Nebraska, whatever bump fucker. I don't care. But you're here, messing with a bunch of Texans late at night, after we've been drinking. You kidding me? Are you that stupid? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, because there's no logic to these people's brains. There's no logic to them whatsoever. All they all they care about is hatred and super chats. Because if it wasn't about comic books, it would be about something else. Because they're trash tubers. All they do is swim around in shit, throw shit at other things not covered in shit, eat the shit, cover themselves in shit, wash with it, rinse their mouths out with it, produce more shit, digest it and produce more shit, stinkier than the shit that they're in, and then expect everybody else to not, expect everybody else to come and join the shit with them. No, that's not how this works. No. People don't like that. People are not a fan of that. And seriously, Riley, boil yourself in detergent before you go anywhere. We could smell you from the patio. You were about a hundred feet in the opposite direction, off the property line. Maybe, maybe not. I don't really know. I don't. Even, I don't actually know. I don't know where the property line began and ended. We could smell you from. We could smell you from. We from where we were, amid wings, nachos, burgers, cigarette smoke, uh, vape smoke, whiskey, beer. The you, you see the beer showing up. The typical bar smells. We could smell you through it. Because you are that disgusting. And this just goes to show you the quality, your quality as a person will come out in who you associate with. For me, that could be a coin toss. Some of the people I hang out with are pretty wonderful people. Some of the people I hang out with can be kind of edgy, but it's fun. They're good people. Could be a coin toss. I don't know. That's up to me to find out. That's up to me to figure out, isn't it? But what just makes me laugh is how short-sighted these idiots are. They really think that inviting these disgusting, degenerate pieces of filth into their group that the comic skaters are somehow morally superior? Do you really think that this is... When, when, how, how, far does it, how far does it go for you guys? Is it going to end for you guys? Ever? No. No. Because it's showing up at Eric July's warehouse, doxing him, and they're going to show up at his gravestone, then you're going to show up at multiple different meetups and harass the people outside and yell and scream in your in your little in your little Jim Carrey most annoying sound in the world voice and pretend that you're somehow in the right? Yeah, tell that tell that to a judge. Tell that to a judge. But yes, your honor, but have you considered 3D assets? It's not going to work like that. Sorry. It's about time you found out the consequences. And Riley, you almost got your ass kicked once. An employee of the Ripperverse was like, I'm done, I'm done. Hiked up his pants, handed an associate his wallet, his cell phone, and he was he was he was bowing up. He was bowing up on you. Everybody around you saved your ass from yourself. The people who had the authority, like the like the police or the proprietor of the establishment where we were, saved you from us. That is not a threat. That is an acknowledgement. We don't respond well to being harassed. But you know what's so great? You know what's so great? This didn't diminish my enjoyment of the event whatsoever. In fact, it was the cherry on top. It was the icing on top of the most beautiful, wonderful, delicious cupcake I've ever had. Because I had a blast hanging out with like-minded people, talking to them, talking to my YouTube heroes, talking to the people who, who I love listening to, who I enjoy quite, who I enjoy quite well. Quite often, I support them. I super chat them because they add something to the world. What do you add to the world? More shit. More shit. I hope you learn your lesson. I hope. I hope. And, and I hope comic skaters watching this seriously. Any kind of any kind of comments and any kind of comments down there who are going to claim that this is somehow justified, I'm deleting it. 
Just saying it right now. If you don't see your comment, congratulations. I'm going to del be deleting it even more. Because this is bullshit behavior. This is bullshit behavior. You would not tolerate it from us. Not by a long shot. Don't expect us to tolerate the same thing. Or better yet, abandon this, abandon this, these shit casters, these shit tubers, and come join the side that enjoys good comic books, good food, good booze, good friends, and maybe, just maybe, maybe, your soul will be a little bit more redeemed being around friends instead of fellow trash casters. Let that be a lesson to you. Anyway, y'all, have a great rest of your night. I'm Norman Nerdum. Bye-bye.